Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the session. And I've added this session because I think it's really, really important that uh, Moodlers get a chance to uh, get as much as possible from the uh, training and uh, support that I promised. And I said I would take you by the hand. And that's exactly what I intend to do as we go through uh, these three additional Moodle training sessions. So this is Nellie Deutsch. And if you could add in the chat box where you're from and anything else, what you do, what you teach, and any other uh, relevant things so that we can get to know you and understand your needs because we're here to help one another. It's not only about uh, Tom and I, <laughs> it's about you. And uh, as Shelley said, pyrology, which means that we work together. A little bit about me, you can read from um, the slide that I've uh, just added. and the presenters that uh, you've been seeing. And we'll be talking about the certificate as we go. But before we get started, there's a warm up. So um, I hope that uh, you're all ready for the warm up. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you're ready for the warm up. This session is really important and I hope people will be coming in. If not, they'll be watching the recording. I only decided to give the session today. It was supposed to be a session in another area, but I think that uh, since we're doing Moodle, it's important to focus on that. So uh, hello to everybody, and um, let's get started. Okay, so um, let's start with the warm-ups. Are you ready? All right, so here are the warm-ups. I've added the uh, PowerPoint presentation to the uh, courseware. And you can also talk about it in the course feed. So notice the instructions. And uh, it's really, really important because that's what this session is about. It's about following what is there. And uh, from studies conducted, this is what it says. Um, in Hanover by two psychologists, Maura Lawrence and Edelberg Ames. When what you see, when you look at something, depends on... Not so much what is there as on the assumption you make when you look, because it's really what you expect and what you think is there that is there. So let's take a look at it very, very carefully and see what is here. All right, so uh, your answer is one to seven in the chat box. So only eight, and you can't see eight yet, in the Moodle support forum on MPA, Moodle practice area on Moodle for teachers. All right, so the first question, okay, so you're going to be busy. First question is, what is the link to today's presentation? I mean, uh, not this presentation, but I'm referring to uh, this one. Okay, and this one. Okay, here we go. All right, um, a little bit about it. And a little hint, where are you going to find it? Okay, where are you going to find the link? Okay, if you could add in the chat box just to give people who are new a little bit of uh, help here. It's not called cheating, it's called collaborating. All right, so uh, let's start the collaboration. Hello, Hassan. Uh, all right, so uh, how are you going to find the link to today's presentation? Any ideas? How, how, how are you going to do it? Where are you going to go? Or maybe you're there already. So where would I go? Courseware, exactly how's that. But in what course? That's right. And uh, can someone add the link to the course so that we can find today's presentation? Now, let me uh, take, oh, there, Anna got it. It looks, yes, you got it. Very good. Okay, so we've got it. 
But what was the process and how did you get it? Now, if you had to do this, let me screen share and take you there. I may freeze for a second here. So while I'm freezing, I can drink my coffee because you don't see me drinking it. I think my uh, video webcam is frozen until things get initialized on my Mac for the screen sharing. And as usual, my mouth is open. Very unpleasant. All right. Sorry. Not polite. There we go. All right. So I've allowed everything. I'm going to take my webcam away so we don't get any interference here. And I'm going to go into the course. Okay. So um, let me get the course here. I thought I had it here. Apparently I don't. All right. So we go into WizIQ. Okay. Dot com. Okay, there I'm going there now, and I'm going to go into, and you can see the uh, the back end of my account. There's the class that we're having right now. There's the Moodle MOOC. Okay, there's the link. Okay, the link to the course, and I'm going to go into courseware. And under courseware, I'll scroll down. A lot of scrolling here. I totally agree with you. I'm going to have to ask WizIQ to do something about this. And here it is, the resources for the practice area. Okay, now notice what I'm doing here. We're going to talk about this. I hope you see that icon going up there. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm moving it up. And this is a feature on Moodle that we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so the session is not here. Okay, so I'm just going to add it over here after Shelley's session and then I'm going to save the page. Okay, so the link is exactly, this is how we get the link. We can also go into tutorials and get uh, the links this way. Okay, so today's link is this one, resources, Moodle practice area. Okay, so there it is. We can get that. You can also relate to it, answer questions, ask questions, and so on. Okay, so there we are. That was correct. Thank you very much, Anna. That's it. You heard me drinking? No way, Tom. No way. No way. All right. So that's the first question. Second question, what is the link of your Moodle course? Okay, whether you are on Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners, Okay. Oh, there Anna's added. Wow, you're fast. Okay. So I presume if you're 31, um, let me check what that is. I don't know. I thought there was 29 and 30. So that's the Moodle practice area. It's not your course. Oh, so you jumped. Okay. So your course could be one of two. Okay. Oh, Anna, you've added 31. There should be a uh, 29 or 30. Okay, instead of 31 at the end, for number two, the question is, what is the link of your Moodle course, Moodle for Beginners, or, yeah, that's right, 30 is for beginners and 29 is for non-beginners. So all you need to do is actually add them, the whole link. Okay, but you would have to go there. The idea is to learn to get the links from your browser. And that's what we're going to be practicing now as uh, Moodlers. Okay, you're going to practice going, there I am, by going into, um, okay, the browsers, because there's a lot of information there, not just for Moodle, but in general. So if we go into the course, okay, here's the course, and I go into um, the uh, front page, Okay, I'll get a lot of courses, okay, in the Moodle MOOCs in this category. And, um, all right, there it is. And then if I click on beginners or non-beginners, I get the link. But what I do is I click on the right of the mouse, and then I get a lot of information, like the right of the mouse has information. So I'm going to go into copy link. And if I copy link and bring it to class, I'll get the beginners. There it is, number 30. Now, if I go back here and, um, where are we? 
I go back here and I click over this link, the right of the mouse, I should copy the link. I'll get the non-beginners. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, and a longer way, is to simply click, and then I'll see it in my browser. Okay, so there it is. I clicked, and here it is in my browser. So I can just copy it from there, and then simply, sorry about that, and then simply paste. Why is this here? All right, so that's one way of doing it. Okay, and it's really important because we can get everything up there. Okay, so while I'm here, let me show you other things. Everything on Moodle, everything, all the activities, all the tabs, all the resources, all the discussion forms, every single thing on Moodle has a, an address. Okay, it's actually a page. So if I click on announcements, that's the link in my browser window. That's the link to the announcements. So if I copy that and bring it to you, okay, let me get another tab here. If I copy it in my browser, I'll get that, exactly that. If I am on the Moodle, if I have uh, signed in or logged in. If I haven't signed in, I'll get an error message. Okay, and we'll talk about error messages. All right, so there. Okay, so the next question, I hope you got that. I stopped screen sharing. The next question uh, Anna has answered, I think, what is the link to the Moodle MOOC on WizIQ? So now we're gonna look for Moodle MOOC on WizIQ. And here I'm going to go into the WizIQ. Okay, so let's see if you can get that. Okay, let's see who's going to get it first. We're now in number three. Again, don't forget that that's it. Thank you, Tom. You're very fast. Next is share the link to your profile. Now, I just showed you that whatever you click and you go into your browser on a Moodle, you'll get the link to where you are. Unlike WizIQ, it doesn't work on WizIQ. I think it should, they should do something about that. And I'm going to um, tell them that because it's really important if I want the courseware, I want to have a link to the courseware. I don't want to have gibberish or I don't want to have to go to uh, the course and then go to the courseware. So in this case, Moodle is a lot more effective because I can get links to everything. Okay, so that's a value. Okay, so I'm asking for the link to your profile. Now, just to help you out, for those of you that are maybe new, and haven't done that much work. We're only in week three of the Moodle course. I'm going to go into mine. Okay, and where do I get my profile? I get it at the top right, or I can get it on the left. I see Tom is here, and Anna's here. Very good. All right, I can get it here, my profile settings at the bottom left. Okay, and then, okay, but I can only get edit, and that's confusing. I'm going to go to the top right and click on my name, but I better return to my normal role first. Okay, click on my name, and I can do it here or on my image. It's exactly the same. So let me click on the image. And there, okay, if I... There we are. And I took it from the browser. Notice it's in the browser. This is where the address or the URL is. Okay, so let me take it back to class. There's mine. Okay, so that, notice that, no, that's not the right, that's my user on, in the course. Okay, so let's see, and notice the numbers there. My ID is four on the Moodle. So let's see, um, let's see, your ID is 1,301. Hassan. 
Notice Tom's ID is 16. Okay, this way you see your ID of your account, and I see Anna's ID is 2,230. That's your ID in the course, I mean, in the uh, Moodle website. Okay, so this is information that we can get, and it does make sense. Okay, information from, and we've talked about this, information from the link, the URL, or the, uh, that you get from the browser window. Okay, what about the rest of you? Okay, practice. See if you can get this. Okay, so you go into, how many of you have not registered for uh, Moodle, for the Moodle course? Okay, let me know in the chat box if you have not registered. If you have not, give me a thumbs down. Okay, if you have not registered for the Moodle for Teachers. And if you have not, you'll, you can register right here, Moodle for Teachers. Dot org. Oh yes, there's still time, of course. Okay, there it is. Okay, that's the uh, moodleforteachers.org. Okay, so don't be shy and register. Next question is, um, what is the link to Moodle practice area? And I believe, Anna, you have, you added it at the beginning. So you can, <laughs> you can go and, and get it from where Anna added. Thank you, Anna. So let's see, um, 31, hmm. That is the Moodle for, that's right, that's correct. 31 is Moodle practice area, very good. I don't expect you to remember the numbers, but they do come in handy sometimes. Next question, very good, Anna. Next question, what is the link to the resource tab? Now, what is a tab? Okay, this is a review for those um, that are here. What is a tab? Thank you, Ella. Ella, that's your user. Your, your ID is 1,498. Wonderful, that's great. Well done. Uh, what is a tab? Well, a tab is a section of a course. It's a section of a course. Okay, so I'm looking for the section, and sections have numbers. Okay, they have numbers. And they have a link in the browser. So what you need to do is you need to go into uh, Anna. See, Anna has added the link. So you need to go into the Moodle practice area. Okay, there. And go into the resource tab. Okay, and let me take you there just to uh, help you out here. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the Moodle practice area. This is where you practice as a teacher. Okay, so where do I go from here? I'm on my profile, there's my name, and I'm in the course. Okay, I'm not in a regular profile, in the profile of the course. I'm going to go into the Moodle practice area. That's the course I'm in. Okay, I can look at the up at my browser. There's 31. And then I'm going to go into the tab. You see there are tabs here, back or sections, back to Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners. And then you've got the resource practice area. Now I can't click there. I'll click here. And then I'll click here and then go into my browser. And notice what it's information I get here. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it from my browser, highlight it, copy it, and then I'm gonna go back to class. Okay, you'll see this in the recording. So there it is, let me stop screen sharing again. Thank you very much, I see that Tom, you got it. Excellent, excellent. Okay, control V in this box here. Okay, there we go. All right, so Tom is right. Now notice what it says here. You see it says section, because it is a section. It's the section of the course. Now notice how much this makes sense. Moodleforteachers.org is the name of the website. Slash course. The course ID is 31. 
That's the Moodle practice area. And then section number two. Okay, makes sense? And that's where we need to be today. Next question is uh, the last one for the chat box. What is the link to the support forum? Yes, support and discussion forums have a link in the resource tab of MPA. So I'm looking for a discussion forum. Okay, so let me take you there as well as while you're going there. Okay, so I'm going to go into the Moodle practice area. Here I am. And then I'm going to go into the support. Okay, this is the support. Click on it. And then in the browser window, I have numbers. Okay, there it is. Copy it and then paste it and bring it to class. Now notice I'm in as a teacher in the course. There, let's see, Tom, let's see if you got it. Did Tom get it? Yes, he got it. Notice. Notice what it says here. It says forum. So I know I'm not, ID is the website. I know I'm in a forum. Okay, and there's no 31 anymore. It's just a discussion form, and it's 3904. That's the number. Any questions so far? All right, so this was just a little, it's a page number, definitely. So this is just a very good Hassan, you got it. This is just a warm up, okay, for uh, today's class. Now, this is question number eight to 10. And this you'll answer in the support mm -hmm. forum right now okay so you go into the support form okay we have it there Hassan you can click on Hassan and Teresa very good Teresa you did it wonderful all right so you go into one of these links why is yours different it says 3892 it should say 3904 Teresa okay so Teresa your um, discussion form let's see what it is it's a support for week two of, um, let's see, of Moodle for, T for beginners. Okay, and this is really important. You can follow the link. If you click on it, Teresa, you'll see where it takes you. And if you click on 3904, you'll get to where we want everybody to go. Okay, so everyone go into 3904. Does everybody see that? I'll add it again. 3904. All right, in 3904, and I'm going to go check up on you, I want you to access the support form on the Moodle practice area in the resource tab section and write the instructions for week two. Please include where to practice the resources, start a new discussion topic. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new discussion topic. Next question, what resource do you think you'll use the most and why? And then number 10, write one question about the resource activity and answer. Now that's a lot of work, so I don't want you to just get started. Let me take you there and show you what you're going to do. Okay, so let's go there now. Here it is. Okay, so I'm, um, no, I'm in the wrong place. Let me add it to the... Uh, browser window I want to go to 3904 okay so right now I'm in 3904 and I'm going to go in add a new you see Yulia has added add a new discussion topic click on that okay and then wait a few seconds now I have to be on the Moodle if I'm not on the Moodle I'll get an error message notice here it opened here it's minimized maximum minimized maximized notice I click here I'm gonna write the subject line and the subject line is instructions right so you write down instructions and then I'll write the instructions don't do like I'm doing it and then I'm going to post a forum you don't have post a forum and then wait a few seconds and then this is what I get. Okay, so this is my input. 
You're going to do the same thing. You're going to go into add and then add your input. Okay, so this is questions. Okay, uh, this is questions 8 to 10. Any questions, feel free to use the chat box if I miss anything. You see it now. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to start <laughs> our session. Okay, so uh, here we are. We're going to talk about resources and some tips. First of all, when you're on the site, but you have to log in, it's really important to make sure you're logged in because sometimes you get timed out and you want to do things on in the Moodle course and you get error messages. The reason you get error messages, I get them too, is because you're not logged in anymore or the page is no longer there. You might see it, but it's not really there. So what I suggest you do is make sure that you're always, always <laughs> logged in and the page is active. If you want to avoid getting error messages after you write a long uh, message, I suggest you always copy and paste. Always copy whatever you have written and then send it to make sure that you didn't lose anything. So first thing you do, you go into the courses, click on Moodle. You'll see this as you go. And then you're prompted with two courses. I've shown you this before, beginners and non-beginners. Of course, this will depend on whether you are an experienced Moodler or not. Oh, you don't see the page yet? Um, Ella, do you see? Oh, maybe you're still under the screen sharing mode. Okay, let's wait a few seconds. Can you refresh your page, please, Ella? You know where you refresh? You go to your browser window, and you should be able to see a refresh. Ella, tell me if um, that helps. Yeah, that's why I'm waiting with Ella so that um, her system will come back after the screen sharing. The screen sharing is based on Java, and it really does drain um, our systems quite a bit. But soon we'll have HTML5, and things will be fine. 30 seconds, eh? Yeah, it does take time. Ella, let's see. Uh, Ella, maybe you should get the desktop. Tom is on the desktop. Um, Ella, let me add the um, link. No, your connection is very good, Ella. You don't see anything. So you need to refresh. Um, do you know where you do that? Because your connection is good. Here's next time you can download uh, the desktop with IQ dot uh, desktop. If you're not using a Mac, if you're using a Mac, then you'll have to wait. Uh, is that the only way? Because you're not in the browser. Uh, let me share the link to the browser, Ella, before you go, because sometimes this um, it's a lot better to be in in the browser. Okay, put this in the browser, leave the class, put that in the browser. There, there's the link. Uh, click on the link and then um, hopefully you should be in the browser because it's better to be in a browser. I don't like um, to be somewhere else. Okay, let's see if that works. Error. Oh, why does it happen? Yeah. Okay, let me try again, even though it's the same link. But I'll copy it again. See if this one works. I don't know what's missing there. But try that one, the one that I just shared with you. 
and I'll cross my fingers that there's no error there. Please, no error. Even though it looks exactly the same. Same error? Oh, because she's already in. Yes, leave the classroom. He's right. Leave the cl oh, okay. Leave the classroom. Copy this. Yes, you're right. Uh, and copy it. Even though it works for me, you know, I can be in this classroom. Oh, maybe because I'm a teacher. I'm the co-presenter. Yeah, just copy it, um, Ella. Copy it. Leave the classroom and then uh, put it in your browser. Yeah, because you're here, because you're here as a student, probably, because I don't. Because I can come in as a student. Did Ella leave? Yes, she left, right? Okay, so she should be back with that. But it's really a good idea to use a... Um, a desktop. And soon WizIQ is going to have everything in the browser window so that um, you won't have to go through being in a special browser. Okay, the idea is, of course, to... Um, Minimize your efforts to make your life uh, easier. Right, yeah, there are some things on the desktop. And you go into My Courses once you're logged in. Okay, and then the resources. The resources are not that many. And the resource area, this is the Moodle Practice area. Notice there's a Activity and Resource area. That's right. And um, we want you to be in the resource practice area and not the activity for this week. Here are the resources that you're going to practice. Notice only these are resources. <laughs> Nothing else is a resource. Okay, so it's book, file, folder, IMS, content package, label, which is very, very important. And we're going to look at label in a minute. Okay, label is super important. Okay, so keep that in mind. Page and URL. Do you have these focused? Because I'm going to give you a little quiz. All right, so MPA stands for? Uh, Google Drive. Oh, let's take a look at that. Um, okay, this is in the course. Now notice when you get in, Make sure you turn, click on, turn on the light. And then there's this information that you saw. This you have already seen. Okay, and then you can always go back. Notice the tabs. Okay, there are back to the course. This is where you are right now. Okay, we're here right now, back to the course. And we're only focusing on resources. Now I want you to tell me number one, are these all resources? Okay, number one, what is a resource? Yes, I know that because it's not, we haven't configured the Google Drive yet. Yes. Uh, book is a resource. Very good. What else is a resource here? Okay, so this is a resource. Anything else that's a resource in number one? Folders. That's right. That's a resource. Very good. Now, if you don't remember the icons, okay, we can go back. Anything else a resource here? No. Well, the labels, okay? Teresa has added a label and Graham, okay? These are labels, okay? Very good. All right, so take a look again. Let me go back here to uh, just give you a little review here, okay? Uh, the resources. 
Okay, notice what they are here. Notice the difference between a file and a page. Okay, the page okay, has lines on it, the file doesn't. And notice the folder, well, the folder looks like a folder. Okay. Okay, next. Notice here the uh, number two. In number two, there's edits. And this is really important. You only see this if you are if you've turned on the light, okay, so to speak. If you turn the editing on. And number three is where you get your activities. Number three, your activity and resource. But since we're only focusing on resources, you will only focus on resources, okay, for this for this week. Okay, my mouse is acting up here. I decided I added a screenshot from the DNA reflection to my practice. I think I saw that. Okay, I'm waiting for my uh, Mac to relax, calm down. Seems to me like, oh my gosh, seems like my mouse, everything is not working for me. Just a second. It should be fine in a minute. Looks like my system has frozen. Yep. yep, I'm here. My system kind of froze. Sorry about that. Waiting around for it to get back to normal. Okay, number two is edit. Number three is add a resource. Okay, here we have it again. Now, what you're going to focus on a label. Melissa has added it and so has Graham, but you're all going to add a label with your name and then you're going to put all the resources under your name. Okay, so you're going to go into label, add your name. And notice here it's minimized. You can maximize it to get two rows of the editor, or three rows actually. Okay, now it's maximized from this end. Okay, so uh, you need to actually use it to remember what's going on here. Now you can have a heading for the label. You can also add multimedia. Notice here the multimedia. You've got image, smiley, and video. You can also record yourself through audio or video and add an image through Poodle through this area, okay? So you can add that to your label since you're adding a label. Okay, so here you can get away with some stuff. Now the label, notice I add my name and then there's lots of information here that I want you to explore, try out, learn and document. Remember you have to document everything. Okay, so as you screen share, you document through Screencast-O-Matic, Screener, and so on. So you go into Common Modules. What's here? What's here? What's here? Okay, learn about this because now you're a teacher in the um, Moodle practice area. And then you're going to save and return to the course. Notice that the asterisk is required. It's in red. So if you don't do it, it won't continue. Um, okay, this is a book. Okay, this is what I did. I created a book. And notice that next to the book is the administration. This is where you can edit. And let me take you there now to show you. Okay, so let me screen share. I'm back here. And notice I'm going from right to left. I'm in the support form for MPA course. A lot of reading here. I'm going to go into the resource practice area from right to left. And then I'm going to go into, see I'm in the resource practice area. And you see these here? These don't belong here. I want you to delete uh, this and this because they don't belong here. So you go into edit, open it up. Instead of editing it, 
you're going to delete it. Isn't that fun? Because it doesn't belong here. It's not a resource. Okay, next. This is chat. Chat is not a resource. So I'm going to go into edit. Okay, open up the edit and delete it. And then this is a resource. Now, who did this? There's no name. In other words, there's no label. But I can move, let's say, uh, this grammar. I want to move it. Whoops. I can move it. Sorry about that. I can move it by, okay, by going like this and then moving it to Nelly. Let me move it down to me. I'll take all the blame. And then I'm going to take this hooray and put it under my name. And then I'm going to go and take this under my name. Okay. Here, I'll put it here. And then I'm going to take Salam and the chat and put it under my name. Okay, so this is under the label Nelly. Now, Graham has a label, but he doesn't have any anything yet. And Teresa, you're going to get the resources under your name by moving it. And how do you start? You go into Add an Activity. You choose a resource, okay, not a activity. You choose a resource. You're going to choose book, file, folder, okay? But you have your label already, but you can have other labels, okay? But choose just one and then add it, okay? Click on add. And then you're going to put it under your name. You, you might want to make this larger by going into edit, edit settings, and then you see it's updating label in resource practice area. It tells you where you are. And then you're going to go to the paragraph and give it heading one, heading two. You decide what heading. Okay. And then you're going to document this as you do. You're going to go through the modules, the restrict, see what's here, lots of information, activity completion. And then you're going to save. Okay, but I'm not going to do any of this. I'm going to let you do it afterwards. Okay, I'm just showing you what you, oh, sorry about that, what you can do. Okay, so we're right here. Again, if you want to add an activity, you add here. Oh, Anna added her name. That's excellent. But make it larger, Anna. Okay. And that's how it's done. We're only focusing in the resource area. We're not, and if you have, this is the support don't forget to add questions, the answers to question 8 to 10 in the warm-ups to this section. Okay, I don't know if anybody's done any of that. Let me check. Nope, it's only me. Okay, so I'm going to go breadcrumbs. I'm in the support area. I'm going to go into the resource. Sometimes when you go, when you use your forward and backward arrows, in your browser, Moodle gets confused. Moodle doesn't know where it is. So don't use these. Only use the breadcrumbs, okay? These are the breadcrumbs. Go from this to this and so on, okay? Otherwise, you'll get the error messages. And you don't want to get those because it doesn't feel right. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so the administration. Okay, here are the breadcrumbs. I'm on the book section and practice area. And here I am in the Moodle practice area resource. Okay, so let's let's go there again. Okay, I'm going to go back to show you. And let's screen. I'm going to show you that everything has administration on Moodle. Everything is administration. So if I want to go into this grammar, okay, I click on it and it takes me to look at the left book administration edit settings everything is here under book administration and how do I go back not in my back arrow but I'm gonna go here to the resource practice area so I don't I don't want to get error messages okay now, I can do this this way, and I can also do it this way here. I can go into Edit, 
and I get the same information. Notice here. Here is the book administration. Okay, so check it out. How do I go back? Here, only here, back to the resource area. Again, be careful with that so you don't get error messages. Okay, so I think uh, that should be clear. Let me know if that was clear about everything has administration, whether it's a discussion form, every resource has administration. Okay, so this is what you saw there. There's the edit. Okay, this is how we add the resources. This is just a review. And then notice the edit. Under the edit, you also have this thing. What is this? If you could just tell me. What is this? It looks very nice, doesn't it? What is it? Okay, I'm looking for answers. It means move. That's right. I can move things up and down. It's a lot of fun. You got to enjoy this. Okay, this means move. Okay, and then notice instead of this, you can use this. Move right, hide, assign roles, delete. And if you click on edit settings, this is what you get. Edit settings. Okay, so where is it? Here it is. Edit settings. Okay. Uh, this is what you move and these were wrong so I moved them and you're going to delete the wrong ones. Okay, instead of Tom and I being the police force, you're going to delete whatever shouldn't be there. Okay, so if somebody adds an activity in the resource area, that's wrong. Okay, and notice it's resource practice area. It is not activity. It's only resource. Okay, so keep that in mind. Only resource. And if you want to go back to the course, you can go back to the course. Okay, but it's only resource. In week two, we're just focusing on resource. So don't get too much because you're going to get confused. All right. Any questions so far before I talk about uh, getting a certificate? Any questions? Everything is cool. Is the reflection area always able to update? Um, you're talking about, yes. You're talking about where you submit. Yes. Ah, very good. Very good, Anna. That's the idea. The idea is to be an online learner so that you can appreciate your students and what they go through. You have to be a learner in order to really appreciate uh, what happens to students. Yeah, you can resubmit as many times as you want. All right, so reflecting on 10 live presentations, uh, you'll follow, okay, here is the, uh, okay, the requirements for the certificate. You write a 500 word reflection, and you can do this on a Word document, Google Drive, wherever you want. You create a video of your reflection. You share the link of the final artifact and you submit in Moodle for teachers. Okay, so uh, let me show you how that's done. But before that, reflecting and sharing. You just answer these questions. Give the title, the date, the presenter, and so on. Describe the event very briefly. And then you answer these questions. You should get 500 words. Did you connect with the other attendees or the speaker? If so, how? What questions came up as you watched the presentation? How did the content relate to you? And so on. There are, uh, let me see, there are 12, 12 questions that you can follow. Okay, 12 questions. I oh, know, 11 questions, sorry. And then you write your reflection like instructions here. You create a video of your reflection using Screencast-O-Matic and so on. You add it to your blog, wiki, LinkedIn group, and then you get the link and you share it. And let me show you where you share it. Okay, you share it 
And let's go back to the course, okay? The Moodle MOOCs. Notice where I'm going. You share it in your area. So if you're a beginner, you share it in the reflecting on the live sessions. Okay, and then the instructions are here again, so you don't have to worry about that. And then you go into this, for example, submit a presentation. You click on it. Oh, I'm in as a teacher. That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Let me go in as a, um, let me switch role here. Otherwise, it'll confuse you. You'll see. I'm going to go in as a student. Okay. So I go into um, submit. Okay, and then it tells me uh, again what to do. And then uh, it won't let me because I'm not a student. I have to go back to my role. Uh, in any case, you, uh, you have a submission button and you submit. Okay, all you need to do is submit the link. Okay, just the link. You don't need to write anything. You just submit the link to your blog post. And in your blog post, you add the video. So actually, you're submitting a link. That's all. Just a, just a link, okay? A link. That's all I want to see is a link. And then we're going to follow your link. Okay, so you submit a link. And the link will represent your written and your video. Okay, so today that's all you need to do. Any questions about that? Oh, okay, Anna. It's really simple. It's very, very simple. You share the link of your blog or your wiki or, or if you add it to uh, Google Drive. That's right. Exactly, Tom. That was the idea. The idea was... And that's why I made it online instead of, I don't want you to download and upload. And you know what? As teachers, we don't want to uh, upload students' work. It might have viruses, or even if it doesn't have viruses, it takes a long time, doesn't it? You know, to download. Why not save time? Technology is made to make our lives easy. So students do their work on their blogs. They share the link. We click on the link, they can update, they can change it, and that's it. And we give them a grade. Um, I don't know, there's a question there about... But you can still, you can, whatever you've added there... Uh, how many, uh, Teresa, how many have you done so far? Because I believe I saw two or three, or maybe more. Here, the idea is share the link. That's all. Share the link. By the way, you can add it to your blog, as I said, your wiki, LinkedIn group, Facebook. Facebook is a problem, you know, Anna, I know you've, no, not Anna, someone has Facebook, maybe it is Anna, I think it's problematic, I think LinkedIn is probably problematic too, I think blogs and wikis, maybe Pinterest, I don't know, maybe, uh, Shelly Terrell talked about a lot of different options, so if you could go over Shelly's uh, PowerPoint presentation and go over her um, presentation, her live presentation, the recordings, you might get ideas on where to add it. But blogs are, are I love blogs. I think blogs have, um, have a life of their own. 
Yeah, but it, it, it's hard to, and I agree that you should maybe get a blog to So are there any questions? Let's see. All right. So we're going to ask questions. Okay, let's go back to uh, to this. Where is it? Let's go back to this. Okay, 8, 9, and 10. All right. So um, you're going to write. It doesn't have to be one question. It could be many questions. As many questions as you want. But try to answer other people's questions too, because after all, we are teachers and we want to practice as teachers. So uh, it's helpful not only for teachers, but also for students as students. You know, and we talked about pyrology to also work together. So if somebody knows something and somebody asks a question, jump in and answer. I know Tom jumps in and answers. I jump in and answer. But you know, you can answer too if you know the answer. Yes, you can edit your blog post. Notice it's a blog post. And you can also uh, edit your Google Doc or your Wiki. All right, so are you ready to get started? If you made some mistakes, that's okay. Uh, whatever you did is fine. The idea is to practice and become better and better. And remember what I said. Uh, what you see when you look at something depends not so much on what is there as on the assumption you make when you look. Okay, this is for all of us. This is, I'm not, you know, I'm part of this. I'm human. We're all human. But this is a human characteristics that uh, and that's why we need to continually uh, readjust, readjust our assumptions and move forward. That's what it's about. So I'd like to thank you, thank you everyone uh, for joining this session. Give yourself a star for coming and for doing your best. You know, Shelley also mentioned today. It it's something that we can't take for granted. Teachers whether on vacation or whether they're working. And we work really hard, all of us as teachers in the classroom, whether face-to-face, -face, blended or fully online. And yet we go to all these courses because we want to learn. We want to improve. And I think that, that says a lot about uh, teachers and who we are as people. So give yourselves a star. You deserve a star. You deserve a lot. Because teachers are very, very special human beings. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you online in the support form for week two resources and tomorrow, of course, for our live sessions. Thank you, Tom. Tom, you're, you're, what would I do without Tom? What will we do without Tom? Thank you, Tom. I can't wait to hear you speak very soon. Thank you. Chat copied. Bravo. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much.